Hello and welcome to English Through Experience. I'm E.T. Tutor. This is another quick Edexcel GCSE English Language Paper 1 Section A revision video. This time we're looking at question 3. Now I'm not going to go into how to tackle the question itself in detail. If you haven't already seen the collection on Great Expectations, I'd suggest you watch the question 3 video there because it really breaks down the question. Whereas this time, I'm just going to try and give you the opportunity to work out the answer by looking at the extract in detail. So, let's have a look. In paragraph three, how does the writer use language and structure to highlight the unhappiness felt by the narrator? Support your views with reference to the text. Six marks, so we need at least one language point and at least one structural point and then I'd suggest picking one further point and with each of these points you need to know what the device is that you're talking about and state that and then you need to give the example from the text and your example should relate to the question focus the unhappiness felt by the narrator so, I'm not going to read the whole of paragraph 3 out again because I already did that in the video for question 2. So, I'm going to read and analyse at the same time. Now, this, what I'm doing, will help you in terms of question 4 as well because the skills are similar. You're looking at how the writer is achieving something, what they're doing, the nuts and bolts of it all. So, by talking through this section, it should also help you in how to tackle question fours. Right. The said Eliza, John and Georgiana were now clustered round their mamma in the drawing room. She lay reclined on a sofa by the fireside and with her darlings about her, for the time neither quarrelling nor crying, looked perfectly happy. Right, let's break down that first sentence. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I don't know, it's not, it's not explicitly saying, I'm unhappy because I'm being ignored. But really, that's what's going on here, and that's how we are learning about the unhappiness felt by the narrator. Now, there's a nice, easy language point here, and it's this word here, darlings. So these children are being referred to as darlings by the narrator. It's the narrator who's perceiving the mother's feelings about the, those children. And then implicitly we work out that that means she knows that she is not cared for and therefore she's unhappy about the situation. So we could say something like, the narrator refers to the other children as the mama's darlings and put that word in quotation marks. And then we need to work out what that word is. And here we've got an adjective, a describing word that's being used to describe those children. So the writer uses the adjectives darlings to emphasize how those children are cared for and loved highlighting the unhappiness felt by the narrator and that would be worth two marks we've got the language point we've said it's an adjective we've said it's that describing word we've given the word and we've put it in context we've said how it relates to the unhappiness of the narrator so there's the first one and then we also uh, get within that another point that you could possibly go for as a structural point, but it's not the easiest one. And that is the section that we've got in parenthesis, so in brackets, for the time neither quarrelling nor crying. So that suggests that these children could possibly be quite quarrelsome quite argumentative and again that implies that it's not perhaps the ha most happy environment to live in so you could include that one as an example and say by adding this extra information into the sentence by using parenthesis structural technique we get a further insight into 
the unhappiness or the potential unhappiness of her day-to-day -day life. Okay, so there we go. We've already got a structural point, not the greatest structural point, but we've got one and we've got a language point. So let's see if we can get anything more. Let's look at the next little bit. Me, she had dispensed from joining the group. Again, we've got an interesting word there. And what we could describe this as is the narrator's decision to use this formal clinical word dispensed that she's been sent away and by using such a formal word it shows that their relationship is not close it's not a good one and again that would highlight her unhappiness then we get the section of the paragraph which is direct speech so we've got these speech marks here so what can we see within this speech and how can we relate it to the unhappiness we know we can just use direct speech as a language feature but i think there's something that we can probably enhance our answer by doing if we look at this whole section so she regretted to be under the necessity of keeping me at a distance, but that until she heard from Bessie and could discover by her own observation that I was endeavouring in good earnest to acquire a more sociable and childlike disposition, a more attractive and sprightly manner, something lighter, franker, more natural as it were, she really must exclude me from privileges intended only for contented, happy little children. So, whew, that was quite a hard section to read. And that is because we've got this massive sentence. So we've got a complex sentence. Don't call it a massive sentence in the exam. We've got a long, complex sentence. And by using this complex sentence, it highlights how awful the situation is for the narrator to listen in depth to these criticisms we've got listing all the way through the sentence as well so this lighter franker more natural these are all things that the mama is saying that jane isn't so again by using this direct speech we feel more empathy for the narrator and their unhappiness is clear for us to see because they're being continually insulted in this way. So we could go for that as another uh, language point. Sorry, another structural point because of the sentence. When we're talking about the sentences in this way, that falls more under the structural category than it does the language category and then finally for another structural point we could argue that the paragraph begins with the good children ends with a reference to happy little children so it's a cyclic structure where Jane is presented in between these good children as being the other being something else being not like them and by using this structure it highlights and really kind of brings home the unhappiness that this character is feeling the pressure to be like these other children all right then we'll leave it at that i hope that's helped a little bit Try to write that up in your own words and see if you can see where you've gained those six marks. It's so making sure, obviously, whenever you're practicing these that you give language and structural points. All right, then. I will hopefully see you again when we have a look at question four, which I know students find the most difficult. Uh, so hopefully what we've done so far will put you in a good position to have a go at that one. 
if you can, you know what I'm going to say, if you can, try and do this one first before you watch the video. You don't necessarily have to write it up in prose, but just try and do a bit of a plan of what you would talk about in question four, and then see if it's, the, if it's similar to the ideas that I come up with in the video. Alright then, thanks as always for watching. Any feedbacks appreciated?